This time we're going to talk about post shading, a technique you can use to break up particularly monochromatic finishes and just make them a little bit more visually interesting and in some cases sort of reflect the way light plays on surfaces. We're going to do this on the Whippet which we had primed a couple of episodes back. So I'm going to apply the finish coat, in this case Ammo of Mika Menez Green Moss, a popular color for World War I British armor. So I'm going to start by putting some in. This is airbrush ready right out of the bottle. All right, so the trick with this is you want to start in panel centers and large areas and work out from there. And just gradually start in there. It's going to look really patchy to begin with, but we're going to even that out as we go. And then once you've got the first part of the panel laid in, just start working out from there a little bit lighter this time. What you're trying to do is leave a little bit of the darker color showing through. So I'm just gradually building up, leaving a little bit around things like the gun mount and the rivets and the edges to sort of simulate the effect of darkening at those points from dirt and grime as well as the effect of sun on larger center panels. So just keep working it up. Ultimately the hinge lines and so forth will get a very light touch so that they blend in with the rest of the model, but you're getting that kind of patchy effect. Now you'll notice that I am constantly working on the model. I have air flowing. I'm using the needle drawn back just a little bit. So the paint flow is minimal, so very little paint is hitting the model at any one time. So as I'm passing over areas I might not want to paint a lot, it's just a minimal paint flow, but I'm not ever letting the paint stop flowing, which means I get less of the spattering effect and I don't need to start and stop on and off the model. So that's the side of the casemate done. I'm just going to continue doing the same thing over the entire model gradually building up each panel. And there's no really right or wrong way to do this either. It's really a matter of how much you want to do, what effect you're looking for, and what you like. And since we're talking about the play of light, I'm going to use a little bit less of this color low down on the vehicle, particularly around the running gear. So I'm going to start with the lighter color up at the top of this. And then concentrate on getting it around certain panels. So as I'm doing this, I'm getting less color deep into the mud shoots where there's the most shade. And that also means it's less critical that you get this color deep inside because you've already got a dark green up in there. And as you do this, you want to keep an eye on it. And if you're not happy with something, now's the time to go back and just give it a light overspray even it up or if you think it needs to be a little lighter in the center of a panel you can always add more of the color to those centers increase the density a little bit it'll brighten it up so i'm pretty satisfied with the way that looks at the moment i've gone over a few times and uh, taken care of any spots that i thought looked a little uneven so i'm going to let it go for there one of the advantages of having that dark green base coat on there and, and layering over the top is I used very little of the actual top color paint. So I've got enough here to put back in the bottle. That gives you a basic idea of how post shading works. There are a number of different variations on that that we may touch on in later episodes. Another option to shade your models is what we call pre-shading. In this case, we're going to prime a model in a gray color, then shade the areas that would be shadows in a dark or black color in this case, before adding the top coat. For this, I'm going to be using an Athern undecorated boxcar. I've already laid out the parts and cleaned them off, so we're ready to get going with the primer coat. This boxcar is molded in this delightful black plastic, so I need to spray it with a gray primer or base coat first so that the pre-shading will show up. For this, I'm using Model Master acrylics starting with dark gold gray. And this is just a base coat, so you just want a nice, even coat. So I'm starting by going up and down in line with the panels, 
make sure I get the paint into those uh, lines and ridges, overlapping each stroke. And then I'm going to go back over it going horizontally. This just sort of ensures a nice even coat that should eliminate any streaking you might get from having it run the same direction all the time. Again, I'm overlapping as I go. Before moving on to pre-shading the box car, I've got to paint the details as well. I've taped them to a piece of cardboard for ease of handling. So next up, it's time for black. Again, I'm using Model Master Acrylic. Okay, so with the brush and narrow pattern, you just want to go down these ridges like this. It doesn't necessarily need to be neat because this is going to be covered up by the next coat of paint, but it gives an in, it's sort of a hint of detail under the surface. A little on the rungs of the ladder here. You want to be sure you get both sides of those rails. I'm just going to continue doing this while the brush is running well and get both sides and the top of the vehicle done. For the top, I'm using a slightly different approach. I'm putting the black down into the recesses between these raised frames here, because that's the area I want to be shadowed on the sunlit side of the vehicle. Well, it looks like a zebra, but this is how it should appear after you've done the pre-shading. All this black and the contrast between that and the gray will be softened but slightly showed through the top coat of boxcar red we're going to apply later. So, much like pre-shading, you're going to want to start by very carefully layering this color into the center of panels on the lighter side. So now you can see it's in the centers. Now I'm going to go back over those areas and lightly go over the pre-shaded spots. And the object here is you want the black to not really be visible, but to just show through the red. And so within a couple of minutes, you can see that it's starting to look like a red box car, but the black is showing through on the edges and around these pillars. So it looks like it's been out in the weather for a while. So that gives an example of how pre-shading can work in its most basic form. There are other ways of doing it, shading with different colors, shading different areas, splotchy pre-shading. There's any number of permutations for this effect, and we'll probably look at some of those later in this series. But for now, that gives you a basic idea of how it can take a simple boxcar and give it a weathered look right from the get-go.